Welcome to the Adotat Show, where today we're diving deep into the heart of innovation with the mastermind behind Possible, Christian Muke. Strap in for a ride through marketing's future and know more than you did yesterday. Deserve to win when it matters most. Facing multi-billion dollar bet the company litigation? No problem. That's why we're here. Trackman Amin, LLP is a true legal powerhouse. Hello, listeners. I'm Pesach Latin, steering the ship across the vast seas of digital innovation, slicing through the realms of advertising technology with a zest of lime and a dash of whiskey. In today's episode, we're laying down the welcome mat for a true industry disruptor, Christian Muche. Right? Did I get it right this time? It was perfect. Lisa. Thanks so much for the invitation. The mastermind behind the possible conference. Christian, how are you doing? How's life treating you? And I mean behind I mean beyond the LinkedIn updates. <laughs> yes, exactly. So these are the more public updates. No, I'm doing quite well. I mean, as you can imagine, just a couple of weeks to go for the second edition of Possible. It's the most busiest time um, for me and my team. Um, but it's it's exciting because I mean, think about, you know, we all work 365 days around the year for an event, which happens then for two to three days. So for everybody, um, it, it is really a, a different kind of work. You know, you, 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 you are now going to the, to the peak, you know, um, in a couple of weeks time in Miami. I used it, you know, I did it for years, was in Mexico before, uh, over in Europe. Um, and, and I was possible, so I'm used to it. But for many others, it's a, it's a kind of different kind of workflow, you know, all around the year. But now it's exciting. Now we see things coming together, um, and this is this is overwhelming. Hit me with the highs and lows. Any plot twists I should know about? And spare me mo- no detail. My life has been needing a vivacious thrill. I mean, you know, the, the, the thing is, you know, you you you, you think about um, also after last year's event. You, know, you think about, you know, what do you want to achieve with next year's edition, uh, where, where do you want to do some improvements and implement new ideas. And then over the time, you know, considering global events, considering turns in the industry, you know, you have to be flexible all the time. And this is the, the biggest learning out there. Um, you, you have something in mind, um, but also, you know, still five weeks to go. I know that we will make some turns in the next couple of weeks uh, in, in many details because the, I think the, the level of requirement out there is far more diverse than ever before. And I think this is the biggest, the biggest challenge still ahead of us, um, if I would summarize like this. So you've morphed a local shindig into a worldwide extravaganza of the DM Mexico, and now you've thrown possible into the ring. What spark of madness made you say the world's absolutely parched for yet another marketing bash, bash and guess who's serving the drinks? Yeah, that, that's a good question. And many people ask me that in, in, in recent months and years. Um, obviously, New Mexico is now, you know, this concept when I launched New Mexico is now 15 years old. Um, you know, I've watched it in 2008, um, or, or it's more than 15 years, 16, 17 years now. Um, there's a life cycle for events. Um, um, and you have two options. You have to um, readjust the, you know, your, your own concept uh, after some time, after 10 years, more or less. Or you, you keep going and then you, you lose some momentum here. Um, and this is exactly what happens with uh, other events. You know, uh, most of them, um, you know, um, uh, redefine themselves uh, to stay relevant. Um, others did not and, and therefore you do not talk about them anymore. So with, with the Mexico, uh, it was the first kind of, uh, kind of industry event where a virtual industry, something which just happens on, on, on screens, went went uh, real and in terms of you know that that we went into a trade hall um nothing else like this so we went into a trade hall like uh, a product driven industry like automotive or 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 hardware industries and and build something physically build something um to show it to our industry and that was a brand new concept after so many years i felt and and also i was um asked out of the industry from many many friends and and industry years that Time changed again, and there are other requirements out there. So um, between you and me, I would say I thought about what could stay, what was the best outcome of New Mexico 
but what needs to be redefined? What needs to be uh, uh, adjusted? Where where does it require new ideas in terms of executing and addressing the people um, in interest marketing, broader, far broader marketing world compared to a couple of years ago? And this is, you is know, it, the outcome was did you Did you... Did, Sorry, did you? Is this your version of you? Uh, uh, if you build it, they will come, or more like I'll throw a party and see who will crash it. Um, not really. I mean, it was be- very well planned. Um, on the other hand, there are always a lot of unknown things, you know, where you cannot influence this. You know, we depend completely on the industry. I mean, we are lucky. We're working in an industry where a, a new technology comes around the corner every couple of months, every couple of years. Um, an ad tech industry, which didn't exist when I, when I started uh, to work on the next code. And this developed over the years then. Um, and the good thing is we know that there's still something around the corner, you know, a new tech trend, for example, which supports our, our creativity and which supports our need to, to rethink every year from scratch on. Uh, I felt my team from the beginning on. Whenever we did possible for the first time, it doesn't mean we can do it sooner in the second year. We have to go back to every single piece and have to review and have to rethink whether well, this is the right thing. And a year later, is there another requirement out there? And this is the truth. It sounds simple, but this is simple. And this is really the truth. And and uh, I train my team every day that this is the extra mile we have to go to stay relevant and to be better than hopefully most of the other uh, uh, events. Um, uh, as an option for our history years to know. Was there ever a hold my beer moment that had you question your life choices? Um, it's, well, of course there are moments where you, you, you might think, okay, is this still the right direction or is it still the right concept? Is it still, um, of course, I mean, there, there's so many things happening. Um, I think you, you need to stay open for that. And there's nothing wrong to adjust your own decisions, you know, and to maybe review it and, and go into another direction. Uh, I think this is, I did it in my career, um, and I would encourage every young person uh, to, to do so. Um, you should have a plan. You should have a vision. You should have a concept at some stage. But this requires 100% flexibility every time. Every time um, or you're, you're, you're on your way to, to uh, meeting the role. Um, I think that's a complex. That's part of the comp- today's complexity out there. You know, I'm not just talking about the industry itself. So it's it's out there in our life, um, and I think this is the biggest difference to to previous years. Um, but either way, this also one of the reasons why possible it is. So every super has an origin story. What is Possible's, and who are your inventors? <clears throat> Possible is, I would say, the premium market. Um, marquee event, which is designed for the greater marketing ecosystem. And this includes brands, this includes technology, this includes digital, media, culture. These are all the topics which plays a massive role for marketers and brands to stay relevant in today's world. But also, importantly, this includes the consumer perspective. Why are consumers using those kind of technologies? Why are using them, you know, how, how, how are they consuming media in today's world, etc. It is all about understanding the consumer perspective first before talking to our industry um, folks and say, this is what, you know, how we believe this is the right way to approach today's consumers. Quite often I see discussions happening. This is how we do it and this is how we believe it has to be right. Um, before really digging into the consumer side and say, okay, let's understand and let's involve them in our discussions, what is really needed and how things are rapidly changing every day. Um, so this is, this is, I would, I would describe it, you know, um, you know, how, how we, how we approach this area. So what was a mountain, a Mount Everest size hurdle that you faced and how did you conquer that mountain? You mean, was it with a jetpack uh, or good old fashioned grit? Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, what were your biggest you hurdles? When, when, when we when we came up with this, um, you know, idea, um, and and then work on the concept, it was still COVID time, and um, and this is a good example of what we just talked uh, uh, before in, in the last couple of minutes. We were focused on okay, what does it require? You know, what kind of measurements we have to take? Uh, what kind of action we have to take to to, to let people feel safe 
in today's world, which was COVID. Um, and then it turned um, into going into, into the end of 22. We had another topic on our agenda. COVID was not really relevant anymore. People got rid of it. But then we had this, you know, kind of recession ahead of us. And nobody expected this. When we start, when I started to work on possible at the very big end of 21, at the beginning of 22, um, that was all about COVID. And then a couple of months later, that was more or less, that disappeared. I mean, Right. Yes, people are, 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 are careful, you know, um, still, you know, how to interact. It's hard with to create a converse, co uh, conference when things are changing so fast. Oh, yes. I mean, th this, this was, this was definitely a, a big shift for us again in the midst of our planning. And, uh, I see, I see events, you know, other events who did it turn, uh, considering these kind of new requirements, others who were still do, uh, do what, what, what they did before. And I think that may, that makes a big difference. And, and we will see, you know, who will stay relevant and, and who is not. Um, I, I think people are leaders, especially are far more selective than ever before. And, um, it's not, it's not just about the, the real added value and all this stuff, you know, which is, which is a common thing. It's a real, the selective process is far more diverse than ever before. And, um, I think that's, that's a bigger challenge for events than ever before. So how do you keep the uh, agenda fresh? Do you keep a dream journal for event ideas or is it all brainstormed in a secret layer? It is um, really digging into details every single day. And this really starts the day after each event. So listening to, com listening to companies, listening to brands, listening to your network, what is on their agenda. And then having the trusted relationship that companies and leaders will tell their secrets in terms of what's on their agenda, what are their plans, you know, for the next couple of months. And this is, it sounds so simple, but this is exactly the, the, the secret source. You have to understand, you have to, to, to try to be in every, in, in every customer's situation and understand what's on their agenda. This is the only way. Um, and then of course, working with your peers in the industry, to get an overall impression, what is really relevant, and you are the creator. I mean, we are we are the 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 the, the, the doorkeeper um, from all these things out there in the market to nail it down, to do a proper curation, and hopefully come up with the most relevant um, conversations and topics. Is there a speaker that encapsulates the possible vibe perfectly? Uh, you mean for for this year or from last year? Could be either or one. Each out. Yeah. Um, I don't think there is one. I don't think there is one. Um, um, it, it would not fit, you know, in, into this diverse world, you know, which I described and the, the very complex world. Um, and I think nobody can do it. It's not a single brand and it's not a single, single speaker. I'm sorry to disappoint you and your, your uh, listeners because it would be great to have this one person. Yes. I mean, we had Elon Musk last year. Uh, he was, he, I mean, people were heavily focusing on, on, on him, but this is again, it's just, the part of our business. It uh, doesn't matter, you know, if you agree or not what he did and what he still does. But, uh, yes, I mean, I like, in general, I like people who are controversial, you know, because um, I think this provides a better outcome than always agreeing on everything um, from the beginning on. Um, so that, that, that's what we are, how we look into this. So what do you think the secret ingredient is for the possible conference that you won't find anywhere else? Is it a secret handshake or better Wi-Fi? <laughs> Hopefully both. Hopefully both. Um, we have the big mess event, you know, the CSs and the South Spies of the world um, with right. thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people. And then we have, on the other hand, I call them the boutique events. Great events, you know, with 100, 200 people, very select, very exclusive, which is fantastic. Um, I don't think there's something in the middle, you know, with um, embracing the entire industry, but not becoming another mass event where you, where, where it's getting out of control. With the right. people coming over, we, I cannot take care of every single attendee or customer. And it's simply impossible. So this is Correct. one of the reasons why I believe there is a gap right in the middle. Think about Ken Lines, or think about the, uh, the other industries like, you know, uh, Davos. We talk about, I don't know, 10, 15, 20,000 attendees, something like this in that range. That feels still um, personal in, in many ways. And from an organized perspective, this makes me still, that brings me still into the position to create 
uh, not just content, but also that I can provide a creation for my people being on site, for my guests and, and customers. And this is what we want to achieve. So there was a space right in the middle between the mass events and the boutique events. And this is where I couldn't find anywhere, uh, especially not in the U.S., um, and especially not for the marketing industry. And there was a request um, to do it. So the the first possible was like at opening night at Broadway. Did the audience give a standing ovation, or were there a few critics in the crowd? There are always critics out there. Um, and yes, we had two and a half thousand people last year. Um, it, it counts, you know, it sounds limited. Um, uh, um, but also it was two and a half, two, two and a half thousand. I mean, we had, I would say, one of the most senior audience um, you, you can imagine. And of course, these are experienced leaders and, and they have dedicated expectations. They're always critics. And this is, this is absolutely fine and necessary. Um, but I have to say the majority was, um, overwhelming. The feedback from the, from, from most of the people was overwhelming. I think we did it right. I think, I think we, we, we set the tone. Um, and people understand now what we do differently. Um, but it would be scary if there would be no critic. And, and we consider this. And we do our survey every year. We talk to people. We spend time with every single customer after the event. We know exactly what went well, and we know exactly where it can improve. What's the most unexpected piece of feedback that caught you off guard? Oh, well, that's that's a good question. Um, the most um, was there was there a suggestion that made you wonder if they went to the same event? <sighs> Let me answer this in in a way that. You know, for some of my guests, you know, there they couldn't be enough celebrities and talent on stage. For others, right. they, they told me, no, that, that, that's more than fine because we want to have more industry leaders and experts um, speaking about these topics. At the same time, you know, we need more content. And then you have others to say, no, let's limit this because I would like to have more time for networking and do my business as well. I think this is the most, still the most surprising thing that the variety of expectations I would say is far more broader um, than ever before, um, and, and and this this is the biggest challenge I think um, in today's event world. Not just for us, but also I think for others. But for us, we take it very seriously, and you know, at the end, we want to make everybody happy, knowing that it's really difficult for with three thousand plus people this year. So, how are you going to measure the success? Is it about numbers, or you just count the smiles? Well. The answer is, you know, two, two parts here. I mean, yes, we do our survey, we do our stu you know, studies, and we talk to people, and of course we have all the summaries then ready to go through. But I would say more simply, if my clients, if all attendees and all my customers, you know, who are sponsors and activators are happy, then this is this is the, my measurement. You know, if, if, if the majority is not all come back and say, that was the really good event for us. And, you know, whether it was, I, 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 you know, I'm RI focused, whether I, I'm focused on creating new uh, relationships, whether I was looking for great surprising content and I could provide something for everybody, you know, with my team, that's, that's the best outcome we can imagine. And this is the goal at the end. Numbers is one thing, um, you know, uh, uh, level of feedback and, 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 and summaries uh, based on numbers. That's, that's all great. But I still, I'm old fashioned. I still believe in personal relationships, and this is the reason why we spend with every single one after the event time to get their individual feedback. Was there a mic drop? A mic drop moment last year? Well, I think on stage it was definitely you know the moment when Elon Musk uh, talked to Linda Yaccarino, um, and then right, of course right. the event what, what, what which happens you know shortly after. I think that was that was. Um, I think the, 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 the most obvious thing the last year for, for most of the people. Um, and uh, yes, it was a great turnout for us. I mean, the timing couldn't be better. So did you have any inkling that their onstage chat would lead to such a blockbuster partnership? Uh, no, I mean, um, talking to them, um, preparing their, 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 um, you know, their conversations is one thing, but of course, um, none of us was um, so deeply involved. Of course not. That we knew exactly, you know, um, how it would turn out three weeks after the event. Yeah, there were some rumors in the industry, uh, da, 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 but this is, you know, nothing I have to comment. Um, there are a lot of rumors all, all the time uh, around people and, uh, and, and, and companies. So 
but uh, I, I knew that there's a, I knew that there was a very special relationship. Um, right. And of course, it was, it was, um, it was uh, recent enough, you know, to bring them on stage. Yeah, I just interviewed an hour ago someone who worked for Linda, and he said that as soon as she got on stage and started talking, he knew that they were going to do business together. I'm not sure how he knew, but he says he knew. He thinks that everyone in her orbit knew. I'm not sure. Yeah. That's, I'm sure that I'm sure you know. Hindsight's 2020, so maybe you know a little bit of that is added to yeah. it. But yeah. he claims everybody yeah. knew. That, that really could be. I mean, I, I, I can't follow on this. I know, obviously, I, I, I'm not him, but um, obviously, it was a very interesting conversation, and it was slightly different than um, originally planned. Yes, this is what I can say. Um, and, and it was a great conversation, by the way. Um, so, um, yes, I mean, we, we are hoping for those kind of moments because that makes a difference, right? I mean, this is exactly what people are looking for. Not the pre stage, um, you know, common statements, which you already heard. Uh, last week or the, the last month, this is exactly what we're trying to figure out. And this, this is all about what we talked about last couple of minutes. You know, it's, it's about preparation. It's about relationship, trust the relationship to, to know um, maybe a bit more than others, you know, what they're planning to do and, 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 and say on stage. But it's not just stage. You know, possible is a conference and it's an, um, uh, and, and, and the experience is an activation. Uh, it's an ex exhibition, however you call it. So we have, more than a hundred partners uh, showing up and have a local presence there with booths, with um, cabanas, with spaces, and presenting our audience their solutions and what they can bring to the table. And this is this is a concept. Um, this this is a big differentiator to most of the other events, especially in the US. In most cases, we talk about a conference, and conference means in general great contact, great networking opportunities. But there is something missing. We go beyond. We provide business opportunities. We connect those who provide solutions with those who are looking for solutions uh, and help. And this sounds simple again, but this is the most tricky part. How do you pick who gets the spotlight, ensuring the event remains a catalyst for monumental moments? Do you refer to the stage or um, in, in terms yeah, of in general? Who gets the spotlight? Yeah. Um, well, I, I, to be honest, I think. Those who get the spotlight most, who are um, telling me, you know, who what talks they, the loudest? Um, I'm sorry. Who talks the loudest? Not the loudest. It's about you know where can we expect the biggest uh, announcement, uh, the most surprising right. announcements. You know, who is using possible and understand that possible is the platform to for announcements. Um, and and those ones, you know, who involve us and and bring us in into and 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 where we are becoming aware of the plans. They're getting the, the spotlight because this is what people are looking for. After last year, did you notice a shift in your gravitational pull? Were you like suddenly fighting off paparazzi, or was it more like about sifting through LinkedIn love letters? No, I wouldn't say this. Um, um, we, 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 are, we are general. We are definitely in the spotlight, and and they always pr uh, pr provide you know um, more automatically more controversial. You know uh, discussions, um, but no, not not a not a not a big shift. We we were not we were not prepared for this. I would say this. Uh, can you tease any potential headline makers or dynamic duels we might see this year? Oh, there's a lot. There's a lot. Um, I mean, obviously, we you know you, you, everybody can find it already on the website. We announced most of them. There's still a couple of announcements coming up in the next couple of weeks. Um, I mean, there are definitely um, you know um, s s sessions like. Um, like um Michael Kassan will will have a special guest being on stage. We will have Bozomer uh being together with Vincent Duke um and, and uh, the global actor. Uh, very interesting conversation. We will have Gary V together with Swan Sid. I mean there are so many and we have so many CMOs and brands being represented and being involved in the discussions like um um uh, no other event. Um there's so many, to be honest. Um, it would be unfair to highlight uh, just one or a handful. But at the end, these are great personalities, and it's, everything is set for them. It really depends on how they play on stage, you know, how they act on stage, and how they provide these surprising outcomes and entertain in a positive way, um, entertain our senior audience. It now depends on them. As soon as they get on stage, it's out of my hand, it's out of my team's hand. So going back to the beginning, where are you originally from, and how has that shaped you as a person? Well, I, I, I was born in Germany. I grew up in Germany. Um, 
I joined um, at the very beginning of my career. I had a uh, my own little kind of company. Um, I think I was the first guy over in Europe who sold an ad banner mid of nineties. Uh, with my own company, I was hired by then two of uh, the most famous uh, internet brands in the U.S. It was um, AOL and then Yahoo. Um, so I was working in the marketing and sales business for them um, globally. I went then from the industry over to the event business. I launched in Mexico. Um, at the same time, I moved to New Zealand, you know, for lifestyle reasons. I decided with my family that we want to change our life. So you, um, cur you currently live in Z New Zealand? I live in New Zealand now for 17 years. Yes, I moved oh, wow. before I launched. Do you have any Mexico. sheep? In other words, I moved to New Zealand, and a couple of weeks later, I worked starting. I started to work on 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 the Mexico um, idea. Do you have sheep? No, unfortunately, you know, I have to disappoint everybody. I'm not in the in the rural, uh, you know, in, environment with my own farming. Um, but well, I still, uh, I, I live in a in a smaller kind of uh, uh, community. Which is on um, far, far north of the South Island, which is called Lenson. Uh, but no the only thing I know about New Zealand is it has the most sheep and churches per capita in the world. Exactly, but unfortunately, the numbers shrink dramatically. You know, most farmers are uh, swapping over to cows now, uh, but we okay. still have far more sheep than people than population, uh, which is yeah. Remarkable. I saw a video once of a of like a police officer having to kill a sheep. I guess they yeah, there's a lot. Yes, it's, so, that's, um, it's a bit different. Yes, yes. Uh, that's all the reason why we're here. For the sheep. Oh, uh, the difference. One okay, the, so. Yeah, sheep are one of the reasons. The wine is another reason, and the water and to be surrounded by the sea is another reason, and a lot. Yeah, I know. I know a lot of people go there to retire, so you're getting there oh, early. Thank you. thank you. I'm I'm not as old as, um, you know, I still, I, I, want, I still want to work with you more years. So give me a, a couple of more years, please. So do you have like the breakfast of champions or so you, you skip, skip the, the breakfast and regret it later kind of day? Um, I skip it. I skip it. You just get to world domination? Um, well, I wouldn't say it like this, but I mean, we have, we have plans. Um, you know, this is not time yet. Um, and, uh, let's see what the future brings, but it gets, it, you know, you see what happens in the world. I mean, it, it, you, you, again, you can have your own plans. You have to be very careful. Um, you know, you have to be very flexible, and and, and what, what what how you how you move forward. Uh, things are changing so dramatically. Um, you have to be prepared to to turn every single second, um, if needed. Um, that's that's uh, different too. Maybe twenty thirty years ago for sure, but yeah. Um, growing and and uh, dominating the event business. Um, in our industry, that's. Uh, becoming the most valuable event, that's, that's what I'll go to. So how do you feel about AI? Oh my gosh. Um, I would say it's not, it's not um, completely identified yet. Um, obviously not. I mean, it, it's a potential to create value and increase productivity. Um, it, have not, it hasn't discovered yet completely. Um, I think one important lesson um, for me is we have to understand it first completely before we, um, and, and the, the current limitation before we count human out of the game. I think it's quite obvious. Um, we are using AI in so many ways, you know, uh, uh, for our own close testers, you know, whether it's social media campaigns, whether you would see it on site, um, when you have to possible, by the way, we create AI generated art, um, uh, on site as well. It's about, you know, um, briefings for the content, all these things. So we're using it, uh, like many other companies as well. Um, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. Um, nobody knows so why did you I choose Miami, thinking. and how did it affect the conference? Miami is the best place. It's the hottest place in, uh, on Earth in terms of, you know, it's, it's a great community. It combines perfectly well technology, marketing, and culture. Um, it right. allows us exactly what we do to do an event outside and inside, not just being stuck in a windowless, you know, conference room all day long. And it's, uh, you know, it's such a strong community. I mean, I've learned over the last couple of years that so many companies are also people and leaders who move to Florida, especially to Miami. It's, you know, a bunch of celebrities and talents are there. It's a perfect spot. Unfortunately, it's one of the most expensive spots in, in, in the US. Um, but, you know, this is, this is a, a, a more a budget challenge for us. Fast forward a few years, what do you want to be when you finally grow up? 
Not what I became today, for sure not. I had not the idea, you know, where we are, where, where I am today. Um, I, I, you know, I was, I wanted to become a sports star, you know. I, I did, you know, a couple of different sports there. At the time when I was younger, I, I played tennis for years. I had soccer. I did, you know, I, I was a, I became a semi-professional dancer and, and all these things. And, and that was my dream at this time, um, before it turned right. into a more serious career, I would say. And so that's your future? You can go back into dancing, competitive dancing? Um, don't you do it. No, I think, you know, what I did before, I think um, that's... I'm getting too old for this. No, 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 it has to be a different sport. It has to be a different sport. I have to choose something else. Maybe you can help me out with something else. Um, cricket. Cricket is, you know, the most popular one in New Zealand, next to rugby. Unfortunately, right. I'm not in this at all. I'm not, I don't get it. I don't get it. It's the most boring sport for me, sorry to say. I'm, I'm watching right. rugby. I'm not playing rugby, but I'm supporting the All Blacks heavily. But cricket, no way. No way. You don't get it? No, I don't get it. I don't to be it. No. Who's one person you trade places with for a day, dead and alive? And let's avoid cliches. If you say Steve Jobs, I need a really good reason why. Um, well, you, you mentioned Steve Jobs. I, I, I wouldn't think about him because I had no, I mean, I don't, I don't have a kind of special relationship to him in terms of when he was leading this company, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but maybe, maybe a politician, maybe somebody, um, yeah, maybe somebody from a few decades ago who was a true leader, uh, and to learn from those people why we are missing those ones in today's world. Um, because I don't Winston see them. Churchill? Maybe. maybe Winston Churchill. Maybe, maybe, um, maybe, maybe um, you know the first chancellor after the Second World War in Germany. Maybe, maybe you know somebody from the U.S. But it doesn't matter who it exactly. It's really that I don't see the true leaders, the, the true leaders anymore. Um, and and this does not belong to a dedicated country. Um, I don't see. I'm missing visions there out there to lead people, um, to lead societies. I would love to pick somebody like Winston Churchill, for example, um, um, maybe from that time. Um, they had a vision. They had a clear vision. What they wanted to achieve and what, how they wanted to, to move their country forward. And this is what Who's I would love to Who's your ultimate guest? On. Sorry? Who's your ultimate guest? Who, do you, who would you really want to, if there was no, you could spend any amount of money or get anyone on to a possible conference, who is your ultimate guest? Oh, in today's time, I think it would be somebody like Sam Altman, for example. Um, right. It would be somebody, you know, one of the big entrepreneurs, um, you know, like Mark Zuckerberg or, or um, you know, um, Jeff Bezos and, and, and those, they, those guys, you know, because they truly have, they have a vision, a far, you know, broader vision. Um, um, the, the Google founders, you know, they invest in so many different businesses. I mean, this is really... Um, somebody like Elon Musk, I mean, you know, he, he runs a couple of massive companies and, and, uh, you know, talking to them for a couple of minutes, you, you feel that doesn't matter which topic, doesn't matter which, 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 which company they're into every detail that can answer every single questions. And this is so fascinating and, and how they, they see tomorrow's world and why they invest, what, where they invest, where they spend all their time uh, and energy. Those kind of people I would love to have, um, um, if possible. What's your favorite go-to drink? It's the latest thing I have to say. I have to share with you. Uh, it's a secret. I'm I'm into pina colada. You know that's my favorite. Your favorite drinks a pina colada. You know, a yes. drink says a lot about a person. It's basically a personality test. So, what does this tell about you? Um, I'm sweet. I don't. <laughs> um, but I like sweet drinks. I like cocktails like this. Um. Why is it pina colada? It, ha it has a tropical look, you know, kind of background. Maybe it belongs to Miami as well. By the that, but this is one of the reasons. Um, it's, it means a warm environment, you know, a sunny environment. It's the place where I live here. Um, maybe that kind of relation. I don't know when you tell me. Do you have a favorite meal that brings you comfort? Oh, taco corn. I, I, I like a lot, you know, typical kiwi. I like a lot of uh, hot kiwi, you know, to the body. Um, um, that's one of my favorites. I like Italian cuisine, pasta. 
uh, but I'm free, gluten-free. So for years, it was very difficult to get gluten-free pasta. In today's world, it's not an issue anymore. Wherever you go, also right. in Italy, Italy you, you get it gluten-free. Um, so I would mention those two ones. But there's far more. You know, so I'm, I'm easy. Before we go, I'd like to ask everyone, if you could send yourself a time-traveling text message to yourself when you started in the industry, what piece of advice would you give yourself? To be prepared for, for a turn every single second. You know, as, as I mentioned at the very beginning, everybody should have an, an idea of what you would like to achieve and where you would like to end up. But you have to be prepared that it won't happen like this. And um, I, I'm saying this because, you know, it's nothing wrong to, to go into one direction and then you, you feel maybe some, sometimes you feel stuck. Uh, you, you're not feeling fulfilled. Um, you, you don't feel joy in terms of what you're doing. And then it's all. It's, it's okay to do step back and go to le- into another door or through another door into another direction. Uh, this is what I did. There were three, four key moments, you know, in, in, in my life, in my career where this happens. And I'm, I'm thankful for this that I did it because otherwise I wouldn't be where I am currently and I'm completely happy what I'm doing here. Okay, and that's all she wrote for today. A huge tip of the hat to Christian for navigating the twists and turns with us. And of course, a hearty salute to our sponsors at Troutman and Men for powering the show. Be sure to tune in next week as we dive deeper into the enigma of advertising and marketing. Click by Fascinating Click. See you on the next wave. Well, we got this episode out a little bit early because we wanted to make sure it was out before the actual possible conference this year. Again, stay curious, stay bold, and know more than you did yesterday.